Hello everyone, I'm trying a different video uh, today. I re rarely, if ever, do this type of video, but I thought I might because it's uh, such a big change in the meta at the moment. Uh, having obviously our regular rotation at the end of the, the Hearthstone year, which is going to be happening, I guess, in the, sometime in the next couple of weeks. I'm not sure on the exact date. But anyway, so just to explain for people who don't know what's going on, um, every two years you have your um, ex ex the basic most expansions last till the end of that year plus another year. So let's say we've got the um, Ashes of Outland set, which was at the beginning of 2020. That would last through the whole of 2020 plus the 2021 year. And rotate at you know the beginning of 2022 around March where we are now um, that means that the expansions for the previous year which are as you can see over here which are the um, rise of shadows uh, saviors of all doom descent of dragons and the descent of dragons galacron's awakening that was a massive one with galacron well, that's method of finding that. Yeah, so these four sets are going to be rotating out. We will still have access to Ashes of Outland, uh, Ashes of Outland, Scholarman's Academy, and Madness at Dark Moon Fair, which is yeah, quite quite nice sets. But that means we're going to be losing lackeys and a lot of the those sort of you know mechanics which you got there tog waggle uh, one of my favorite cards um then we've got saviors of all doom so that's all the quests gone no more quests and no more reborn minions either which is also a big change and of course a massive one is no more galacrond so we've got the five classes which have galacrond and and twin spells is also moving out i think with the rise of shadows and and of course and of course i can't forget one of the major major things which has happened in, in this, these expansions is the highlander sets so no more highlander sets uh, or cards so uh, goodbye to them anyway so that's looking forward so we're going to have the ashes of outland scholarman's academy dark Miss, dark moon fair and we're also going to get the new expansion, Forged in the Barrens, uh, which is coming out this month. Okay, so let's... Um, now, besides these four sets, usually what happens is we've got our standard and basic set, which is, you know, the stuff you get just by leveling up. That's the basic set, and the standard set is you buy standard set packs. That's changing now. Now, the, both the basic and the standard sets are actually moving to wild with these the Year of the Dragon sets as well, which is really strange. It's the first time that's happened because the standard set you always could rely on, you know, if you, if you can't afford your new packs or anything, just go back to one of the classic like Beast Hunter or something like that, which still works in any expansion, you know, more or less. Um, or, uh, or token token charm and stuff something like that uh however we're gonna have to get used to a completely new base set now which is called the core set now the core set you don't need to buy this this is going to be automatically in your um you can just read this quickly if you'd like um the core set is 235 cards 160 class 75 neutral including 29 brand new ones. The rest are basic, classic and wild cards we already know. Some of them are changing, basically. Okay, and the details are all in here. Okay. Um, unlocking it. Right, so right. So this is what you need to do to unlock the core set. You need to, like, hit, I think, uh, as it says here, EG, level 20 on Druid, Hunter, Paladin will be enough to unlock all the neutrals. So you've got to get um, level 20 on three different classes, it seems. Yeah, which is level 60 across multiple classes. Um, 
In order to unlock neutrals, you need to hit level 60 across multiple classes. Okay, that means it's a bit misleading. It doesn't mean across multiple classes. It means in total, it, you can you know add add the different classes together basically. So you really need to like reach level probably 20 on three classes or level 60 on one class. So most people have already got that. So they'll be able to unlock all the neutrals. But the for the for the class specific um, cards. However, you do need to be level 10 at least on each of those classes, which again, for most people, you're already on level 10 on all the classes, if you're watching this video, unless you're completely new or you just never play one class ever, literally never. Um, you only need about uh, 20, 30 games on any class to reach level 10, I think. Um, Right, okay, so you can read what he's saying here about disenchanting cards, slightly complicated. But anyway, the point of this video is I want to um, go through the different possible deck archetypes we might um, run into and different ideas. Maybe give you an idea, maybe leave in the comments some ideas which you may have based on my analysis or, or your own looking at the, the decks. Okay, so let's have a look at the neutral cards first. We've got Thalnos, a bit of spell damage. You've got very... Right, so the first one which catches my eye is Baron Rivendare. So that that's a really powerful card if you've got the right sort of death rattles to synergize with it. So already I'm thinking might be some death rattle decks coming. We've still got Ken Blood, Bloodtooth. Um... What do we have here? We've got a completely new card here. Overload Run Tank. Whenever this attacks, give 1-1 one, one to all minions in your hand. Okay, so we've got a bit of hand buffing going on here. Draw your highest cost minion as a death rattle. Might have uh, some big decks here. We have to see. Um, we've got the dragons. The dragons have changed drastically. Um, so let's go through the dragons. I find this one of the most interesting ones. Nazdormu used to be 15 seconds as long as it was on the board. That each turn only lasts 15 seconds as opposed to the 1 minute 15. However, they've changed it that if both players have this card in their deck, then every turn for the whole game will be 15 seconds long. So that's really exciting. And if a person wants to climb very quickly, um, I don't know if you watched some of my other videos about the, the mathematical theory behind the quickest way to climb in ranked is basically comes down to two things a high percent win rate deck plus fast games that is so important if you've got 51 percent win rate with a deck you're going to climb faster than a 60 percent win rate deck if the 51 percent win rate deck finishes its games in one minute and the 60% win rate finishes them in 20 minutes. Yeah. After 10 games, you just spent 200 minutes on the, on the 60% win rate get, get, um, deck. And that would get you uh, two stars because you win six, lose four on average. Whereas the 51% win rate deck, just, just to illustrate this, obviously it's not realistic. Uh, if you win this in, in two minutes, yeah, then in two hours, you've got 60 games. So therefore, the win rate will be, you'd have, well, it doesn't quite work. Okay, but you get the idea. If it was like a 58% win rate, then you would have climbed many more stars because you'd have many more games to increase your uh, percentages, um, to your wins over losses. Anyway, so... If you could craft, if you could sneak this into a deck and you've got a deck which can play quickly and you like playing quickly, I like playing quickly. I'm, I'm more of an instinctive player. Sometimes I have to think, but if you see my videos, sometimes when the decisions are far are, are simple, I just play it finished. Okay, so that could be really interesting. If that could get into a deck, that could be very good for climbing. Hopefully everyone's going to have some sort of pack that everyone has to have in the storm in their deck. 
<laughs> that would be really interesting. And then the, the, the whole meta would be crazy. Very fast games. Very cl uh, fast climbing rank. Unless you're a very slow player, then you'll be in trouble. So then that's no problem. Just to include it in your deck. Okay, then we've got Alex Straza, the Life Binder. Choose a friendly character. Uh, if it's friendly, friendly, restore 8. If it's an enemy, deal 8 damage. So you don't have this setting the hero, uh, either your or your enemy's hero, uh, the hero to um, 15 health. You don't have that anymore. Rather, it just does 8 health or 8 damage. Mm, bit, yeah, yeah. It can go face though, so that's uh, that's that's definitely a plus. Okay, right. Draw spells till your hand is full. That's Malagos the Spell Weaver. Now for combo decks, that is really really useful. The problem is for many combo decks, you want to have the old Malagos to play all your spells with spell damage. So we have to find other ways of getting spell damage, and you've already got that in the in the Phoenix card for Shaman and for for Mage where it's dormant for two turns and then it gives you two spell damage. So if you play two of those, then you're going to get your four spell damage, which is almost like a Malagos. And and the the plus side is, the turn where they wake up, you're going to be able to... You'll have ten mana, potentially. Well, you will, because you would have played this. You'll have ten mana to play all your spells, and all of them are going to be buffed by four spell damage. So that's... That's a really strong card for combo decks, I think. Onyxia Broodmother, at the end of each turn, fill the board with whelps. Now, this is even better than the current uh, Onyxia. Because the, the current Onyxia is, as soon as you play it, you get the whelps. But here, you've got the option of putting some other more valuable minions on before the end of your turn. And also, if your board's cleared, and this is still alive, you get another refill so this is going to be great for token decks maybe token druid token shaman which have got bloodlust or well actually we'll see about druid we have to speak about druid not very pleased mm, they're taking out savage or it looks like but anyway we'll see if there are any te token decks which can take advantage of that uh the next dragon is ysera the dreamer uh, add one of each dream card to your hand. Now, some of the cards have been slightly altered. Um, for example, um, Ysera's uh, Awakening, I think that's the one we do five damage to all characters. Um, it doesn't go face anymore. So this isn't, uh, you know, you can't just uh, play this and have a guaranteed five damage to face. It just does damage to the board. So it's more of a strategic refill your hand and it's sort of like a jack of all trades it gives you nice cheap minions it gives you board clear it gives you a buff as well okay so that's more of a value deck i would imagine okay deathwing the destroyer destroy all other minions discard a card for each destroyed now the old deathwing discarded your whole hand this one only discards how many minions you've actually got on board. So this is a buff basically for this. Unless you want to play this with like a, a Mechathun where you want to destroy all your cards as well. But then why are you playing this? So that's a load of rubbish what I just said there. Forget that. Okay, so it's just a, a better death wing basically. Where you can actually play it without usually the only time you play deathwing is when you're absolutely desperate you've generated it somehow like let's just hope the deathwing sticks on board and i can go face twice for the lethal in the next two goes but uh, in, in the current meta that's very unlikely you've got so much hard removal ways of dealing with it okay but now you don't have to risk your whole hand being you know you've got other options you can hope to discard a few tokens maybe or maybe a couple of spells which you don't need and then your other cards will still be in hand so okay so that's the dragons um yeah everything else pretty much the same right let's go into the 
smaller minions. Um, stealth with spell damage, a mini mage. Big expensive spell damage for th for three mana, and it's a three one, so it's very susceptible to AOE. Not so sure about that. Um, let's have a look. Plus one less for each card in your opponent's hand. Mm, not sure how that's going to get into anything. Uh, Nerubian X back in. That's a Naxaramus card. One of the first ever expansions. And you've got this card. This is a really interesting one. Can't attack. If you've got a silence, then this is really, really powerful. A turn three, four, eight. Now, if you see the cards which are, which we've got at the moment, basically you, there is a concept called power creep. Each expansion, the cards get much better until the ones from two years ago pale in into insignificance compared to the current set. But however, the, because of the core sets changing, I think that might change. And, and something like a 4-8 a would actually be a very good 3-drop. Within the current meta, a 3, you can have a 2-drop, you know, Argent Squire or something like that, which is like ridiculous. You know, there's lots of other ways of getting massive minions turn 3. Um, well, not Van Cleef anymore. We'll see about Van Cleef in a minute. Okay. Um... Defender of Argus, useful for control decks if you've got big minions, talk them up. So that's something to take into account. Gadgetzan Auctioneer. So for combo decks, this is very important. This helps you draw out your whole deck. Uh, if you've got a lot of cheap spells, so this might be quite important. Especially with Priest, uh, if you've still got the Blood Weaver. Um, so therefore, we've got that nice APM combo, which one of my recent videos is showcased you just play the gadgets and auctioneer with the blood weaver and you can just cycle through your deck very quickly oh actually i haven't uploaded that one yet that's the cthulhu one right okay you get the idea two tech while well, you have a mech that needs a lot of mech synergies right now very interesting so in terms of combo decks and otk decks we've had a massive massive nerf people might not notice this stone tusk boar and blue warrior don't go face anymore which is really upsetting i don't know why they did it stone tusk boar has got two attack obviously because it's useless as a one one rush it's nothing right but uh it's a two one rush Ugh. good for defensive decks i guess now they want to control the board but oh ones which want to keep the board Blue Girl Warrior, 3 1 rush. Okay. Yeah, it's a shame because the, the, the charge minions are so much fun. You can do sort of stuff which you buff it, then you suddenly go face. We're going to see Hunter doesn't have a Tundra Rhino anymore, which is also a big problem, which means not many big. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so we've got a few taunts and buffs. Be interesting to see if Stormwatcher can stick on board now with the changes. Chillwind Yeti, I'm expecting to see that in a few decks. Used to be one of the best cards in, in Classic. Just a 4 mana 4 5, but obviously you've got 4 mana 4 5s which do other things as well now. That's why I was talking about power creep. Like the power levels are just creeping up. And then you've got a Stone Skin Basilisk. That's a poison with divine shield. It's really powerful. If you play arena, this is one of the strongest cards in the arena. It's good against random decks because it just once you put this down on empty board, they're going to be very scared to put anything big down. So you're effectively controlling how they play the game. Unless they've got hard removal, which is not so easy with the divine shield, it makes it a bit harder. You've got a silence here. Um, yeah, nothing else too exciting. A bit of toxicologist give you a weapon one attack, so we could have some weapon synergies things going on. Um, yeah, nothing too scary in the, in the core set here. 
So let's go through each class and then we'll go through the different archetypes I, see, archetypes I see happening in the next expansion. So the first thing I see here is Warglaze of Azanoth is here. Battlefield still there. And you've got this. Okay, so there's going to be three, four archetypes of Demon Hunter as far as I can see here. There's an interesting new card, Charge with Lifesteal. After you play a card with Outcast, return this to your hand. So this is sort of like Charge with Lifesteal. Now, of course, with that, the Combo Demon Hunter, the one which uses Lifesteal to damage uh, the enemy's face instead of healing your face, got a lot of support for that. We've got Lifesteal, Lifesteal, Lifesteal here as well. So I definitely see that archetype is going to be strong, which is really annoying because I don't like it. Uh, it's so frustrating to play against because they just got so much removal. And then once they do got the combo, you can't do anything about it. But And I've been, of course. Um, the second archetype will be your classic aggro uh, demon hunter, which I think is uh, it's still playable. I think uh, this is a, this was a cool card in it. You got Warglaze of Azanoth. It's mm, some of the some of the main cards which you need for it have gone. So still Chaos Strike. All right. So uh, Agro Demon Hunter, weapon based Agro Demon Hunter, is still playable. I think. Then you've got Summon 3 of the Diary of the Rush. You've got this, you know, the Suicide, I'm not sure what they call it. The Suicide the Demon Hunter one where you get synergies from killing off your minions. That might still be playable. And of course, you've got the big Demon Demon Hunter. You've got Rush after you attack a hero. Uh, after your hero attacks an enemy, this attacks too. So that could be put into um, a slower... Uh, yeah, aggro hunter. It sounds strange to put an eight drop in there, but that's really powerful. Well, I think that basically wraps up demon hunter. Yeah, you could basically got your classic aggro demon hunter, your combo demon hunter, the lifesteal one. You've got the the one where you sacrifice stuff to the sort of the zoo style one, and then you've got sort of a bigger demon hunter as well where you've got things where you can cheat out demons or for cheap stuff like that okay now to druid one of my favorite classes in fact technically is the class i've played more than any it's the only one i've got a thousand wins with in ranked let's have a look what they got here we've got scenarios which is nice as one card i always wanted to craft i guess i've saved myself some gold now Gives you, buffs up your minions or gives you two, two twos with taunt and obviously that in itself is not that amazing it's good but it gives you a 5-8 body as well um, three two two treants uh -huh. okay soul of the forest this tells me that yeah definitely landscaping some two treants Basically, you've definitely got a power of the wild. You've definitely got a treant druid. Maybe not with a savage draw though, which is a shame. But you do have things like pounce if you want to be very aggressive. And of course, you've got some other tools in the the druids. Um, the, the, you know, the three expansions here. They've got some decent cards, obviously, as well, which can support a, a treant druid deck. Um, I'm not sure whether Guru Might Tree is rotating out, but that would obviously be, be, be part, of, part of this. You got Wild Growth, and I think Overgrowth was also is also still going to be in this in the in the meta in the new expansion because it's not a basic card. It's one of these three. I can't remember which one exactly. So Ramp Druid, we got Nourish as well. So you definitely got Ramp Druids is still here so you're looking at a big druid you've got to choose a friendly beast summon a copy of it 
So if you've got some nice big beasts, then we can have a big beast, sort of ramp, big druid. So I think there's support for that already. Uh, not so much beasts there, there's more dragons, isn't it? Maybe the dragons all rotating out. Okay, so it looks like, and of course you've got Enchanted Raven as your one mana, two, two, and you've got the Gibberling as well. So it looks like it's basically going to be Treant or Token Druid. That's how I'm seeing it for Druid. Moving on, next you've got the only charge minion in the game besides the Demon Hunter one, which we just saw. It's this new one. Okay. So we've got King Kurash, very strange in include if you ask me. Um, I'm guessing maybe the idea is maybe to do some sort of OTK combo. If you manage to get King Crush on the board cheap and Dire Frenzy it, so well, one of my favorite cards from the from a while back. Uh, yeah, you can get some nice big minions out like that. It gives you a lot of value. Slow cards, but for a, a slower, a big you know, Tundra Rhino, you know, OTK deck, Dire Frenzy was really good. Um, well, as you can see, there's no di there's no Tundra Rhino, which means you can't make your beasts go face anymore. Yeah, which uh, another way of doing that was by scavenging Hyena, Tundra Rhino, put little tokens on the board, kill them off, get a massive scavenging Hyena, go face for lethal. Deal three damage if your heart is empty, draw a card. Uh, very aggressive, very aggressive card. That's the sort of deck where you're going to be playing things very quickly and you want a bit of a damage and draw a card. So it tells me that I think there's a bit of a mix this, isn't it? You've got Arcane Shot, discover a copy of a beast in your deck. Oh, a copy of a beast in your deck. That's interesting. I could get you King Crush, couldn't it? Uh, you've got three secrets, besides the ones which are in the current expansions. So you're going to end up with about, I think, about six secrets in total. Hmm, no flare anymore. Not that people use it. Bear Shark is a really good card in this day. You can't, bu you can't buff it though with the. Uh, Dire Frenzy. So I'm really not sure what the, what sort of deck you can make with with Hunter at the moment. I'm guessing maybe like a, a massive OTK deck with uh, that card which summons three minions, attack face, and then dies. So you can put King Crush in, you can put Tonkin, and then play that. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of that card. What was it? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I think we found the, the card we're looking for. It's over here, it's this one here. Maxima Blastenheimer. Summon a minion from your deck, it attacks the enemy hero, then dies. Okay, so if you use that in combination with, you know, King Crush or, or Tonk, that's this card here, which is going to do 8 damage to face and do another 8 damage once it dies. Yeah, I, I, it's very hard to set that. That means you're going to, have to be playing a spell deck, basically. Which this does have a lot of uh, support for, which is lock and load. So I think there's a real possibility of an OTK type deck where your first few turns are going to be with lock and load and then you play the Blast Heimer, Blast and Heimer to cause a massive damage face. Or you've got your basic beast, bog standard beast hunter. There's only two which I can see working at the moment. Uh, of course you've got the, you do have a bit of secret synergy as well, so you could do that as well. But you've got the beast synergy here, I'll just play the beast, put a random beast to your hand. Um, yeah, but that's basically only two archetypes. A big, big, massive smash the face uh, hunter, uh, or sort of like um, with seek with, with with spells in the early game, and so that's a nice OTK deck, or 
like a small sort of regular just tempo uh, or aggro hunter where you're just putting beasts, cheap beasts on and just controlling the board with like little spells and stuff like that and secret synergies as well. Okay, moving on to Mage. What do we have here? It's got Flamestroke, Kaldara Drake. Could be good if you use it in a different class. I'm not sure how good it is in this class unless they buff the hero power. Which they do here. They've got Fallen Hero. So if you've got Fallen Hero, you've got potentially... Well, you can't play both of these in one turn and then play more than one hero power. That's a problem. So if you want two, if you want two damage to face or two damage to the board, two pings, play this hero power twice. If it sticks, play a couple of fallen heroes. Your hero power deals three, so you can deal another three hero powers if you've got two of these. Each one doing three, so you can, nine. Yeah, don't see any game plan around that. Yeah, you still got your damage spells. Do you have your frost spot? Oh wow, they've taken away frost spot. So that's one spell which which used to go face, which doesn't go face anymore. Do you have counter spell? You still got counter spell. Okay, so I think a small spell mage or secret mage is still going to be strong. I don't see any new archetypes here. Spell damage. That's a strong card, um, so I, I would I would reckon that the next minion you draw inherits these powers. I see. So that's that's a permanent plus two spell damage. So whenever you play any minion, it's going to get two spell damage. So yes, yeah, so you could play like a your regular spell, small spell mage, or you could do a big burn mage. Uh, I don't see any support for any other any type of any other type of deck archetype there. Moving on to Paladin. Um I wonder if the Librams are still gonna be around. I think they are. I think Librams were yeah, Librams were Ashes of Outland, I think. So you still have your Librum and Pure Paladin, I, I think. Um we've got Tyrion Forging, which I've always wanted to get one of the main cards I wanted to get for like Big Paladin. So now everyone's gonna be able to play Big Paladin, hopefully. Um but it looks like there's much more support for token paladin or silver hand paladin. We used to call it dude paladin in the other day. So dude paladin is back it looks like. Give one attack to silver hand recruits you summon this game. So then you, you can play two of these throughout the course of the game. So that means silver hand recruits will now be 3 1 after you're doing that. And of course, you've got ways of summoning the, the the three ones with cards like this: summon five one one silver hand recruits, and you've also got the darkness at the moon fair synergy cards as well. You've got this one here: Lothraxians the redeemed. The rest of your game, your silver hand recruits uh, have divine shield. So it's getting a bit ridiculous with these silver hand recruits. They're going to be very, very strong. I think I've got a feeling that Dude Paladin is going to be top tier. I think it'll be one of the strongest classes in the meta. Um, remember, that's all using Paladin cards, which means you can have a pure Dude Paladin, which sounds extremely strong. Throw the Librams in. Wow. Now, of course, you've got Day, of, Day at the Fair. Summon three or five Silver Hand recruits. So you're going to be putting this in the deck rather than this one. But if you're going full on Paladin, uh, Dude Paladin, you're going to be putting both in. Blessing of Kings. Got a little, little dude there. Righteous Protector. A really annoying turn one play for your opponent there and of course you've got warhorse trainer your silver hand recruits have one attack so they can end up having four without having any buffs at all just by having two living justices two warhorse trainers actually will give it five attack so 
this is sort of like the new token deck, it looks like. Um, otherwise, nothing too special in this, in this, um, in the cool cards. Okay. Priest. Now, what are they doing with Priest? They mess around with Priest so much, it gets so annoying. You have to relearn it every single expansion, it seems. All right. Celine's still there. Right. Your hero power becomes two damage. Right. Now, the old shadow form is if you play the second one, your your hero power becomes three damage. Yeah. It's not giving me any information on that. Okay. Right. Um, Shadow was Ruin. Oh, remember what I was saying before about that, uh, that f three mana four eight? Silence a minion, then give it three health. So you're going to have a four eleven. Yeah, three mana four eleven. Well, it's going to cost four mana because you're going to have to silence it. Wow. Okay, so you do have a silence, a one mana silence instead of zero. It's a silence which gives three health. So if you're using this on your enemy, then there's a trade-off. You're giving it three health, but at least you're silencing it, and it's one costs one more than your the old-fashioned silence. However, on your own minion, with a negative death rattle or negative text, you get rid of the that and give three health. Seems that you could put this into a sort of an aggressive priest. So it looks like this tempo priest going after a friendly character is healed, gain one attack. That's like the old light warden, isn't it? That gained two attack, but we don't have it anymore. So this is instead of the light warden, which was a, a, a class which any class could pl play. Remember when Warlock used to play it, it used to be very interesting. Okay, give me two health. These these are all sort of cards which buff and buff. So you've got sort of like a little mini sort of like zoo, zoo type priest. Not really zoo, but sort of like a tempo priest. Do you have inner fire anymore? No, no inner fire. Yeah, but you've got buffs. It's, it's a bit strange. I, I feel that priest, these cards are kind of an alternative to Paladin. I guess Paladin's focusing more on silver hand recruits now. This is just you can play any cards with these buffs. Deal three damage to the enemy here as a death rattle. Well, that could work with the uh, Riven Dare, I guess, to double up the death rattle. Um, very strange. The only, the only thing I can see based on these cards, I'm not taking into account the cards which are already here is basically a, a fast aggressive priest which keeps buffing up things after play you play two three and you buff up another card buff this up heal you got a holy nova which which heals your minions up which is in turn going to buff the attack on this so i think there's going to be an aggressive priest basically coming out Coming on to Rogue, we've got a completely new card, Vanessa Van Cleef. What on earth does that mean? Is that his wife or something? Add a copy of the last card your opponent played to your hand. Hmm. That's like a burgle sort of card. Let's see if there's any more burgle cards here. Uh, you've got your bog standard, sort of aggressive, sinister strike. You've got your eviscerate. No. No eviscerate. Mm. Shadow step. Ah, you've got a swashburglar. So it's basically going back to the old fashioned combo priest. Uh, co combo rogue. So world kick priest is. Uh, I keep saying that. World kick rogue is going to be much stronger now, I think. Because you've got some. Uh, you've got the plague sign to heal so again it's going to be tempo it's going to be tempo rogue basically and you can still play the old you know weapon weapon rogue as well still get your deadly poison yeah nothing much is changing in priest in my opinion shaman so look at these two cards look carefully feral spirit 
two two threes with taunt overload one used to be overload two so this is playable now used to be such a, a, a downside having one one overload Deal three damage to all enemy minions overload two so this is not two or three now it's three and overload two so this is much more worth it now it's much more guaranteed you don't have those annoying low rolls where it does three damage to all the tokens but two damage to the, the three health minions which happens so much <laughs> oh and look at this We've got novice zapper spell damage one <laughs> overload one now what i've seen from the new exp uh, expansion coming out there's going to be a lot of damage spells in shaman so i'm guessing there's going to be a very aggressive burn shaman or weapon shaman because we've still got doom hammer still got rock biter weapon got an interesting new totem as well At the end of your turn given random friendly minion one attack so totem shaman could be back as well um my friend axel k has actually just brought out a video of and totem shaman so this would actually supplement it really nicely strength totem looks a bit like heal totem but yeah whatever then you got overload so what do i think is going to happen with shaman shaman's getting one one for each friendly totem. definitely to totem shaman's going to be very strong i think it's already playable at the moment and now it's just got that extra bit more a support where it's just going to be push it over the edge to become a main tier deck and uh I don't care. It's, it's 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 okay but hmm, it's got six health now that makes a bit more sense so it's basically like a six six with rush divine shield taunt right and oh look at this earth elemental is actually playable now because only overloads for two so we're going to have like an overload synergy if there's any synergies with overloading there's definitely plenty you've got unbound elemental which synergies synergizes with overload um fire elemental is a six five dealing four damage that's much more of a useful card now that's actually decent that's a decent card six three dealing three damage was a bit underwhelming you got your hex of course and you don't have any more earth shock so no one mana destroys the, the 2020 argent argent braggart to be like a yeah just kill it basically ah so look at this strength totem is replacing wrath of air totem one spell damage as a new basic totem i see You'll be able to roll it from hero power as well as other cards instead. Ah, okay, so you don't have the spell damage totem anymore. So no more copying the spell damage totem loads of times to give you like eight spell damage and just do two spells face and you've won the game. Right, Warlock, very interesting. Look at this. Lord Jaraxxus, it doesn't set your health to 15. And I, get, I think it's the same hero power. The Crypto 3 8 Blood Fury. So Jaraxxus is really, really powerful because that hero power can just win the game. Two mana, you've got a 5 5, five or 6 6 every single turn. It's just ridiculous. So I think Warlock's going to be strong, but what, what support do you have? How do you get there? Also damages minions next to whoever this attacks. So this is a taunt minion, which has a cleave effect when it attacks. Huh, it's an interesting one. So it's sort of doing both jobs. It's defending and then it's messing up the other person's board as well. Okay, if you could cheat out demons with a uh, Warlock or... Which I think there's ways of doing it. Some good good demons here. Discard your load. So okay, you can see some big demon warlock deck happening here. Destroy friendly mini if you had five or more. Summon five of demons, so that's clearly for zoo. 
A zero cost five five effectively. You just sacrifice one of your tokens. Right, and then you got this. Um, so you got control. I think this is going to be a control warlock. You still got a lot of the control tools, and you can have a zoo warlock. That's basically it. But I think Jurax is, is definitely going to find its way into the into the big demon warlock. Let's see. Oh, we get to play Gromash now. So Gromash hasn't changed, but I didn't have that card either, so it's nice to be able to play it finally. Brawl. Okay, it looks like your classic. Nothing seems to have changed that, that much for a warrior. Yeah, so the, the, the warriors. Hmm. So you're not going to have Risky Skipper, so the Armor Smith's not going to be so, such an important card now. Got armor. Ooh, there's a new one. A rush five four for four mana. It's interesting. It reminds you of some of the um Witchwood card, which kind of was like that. Yeah, um, I'll add a random warrior minion spell and weapon to hand. That looks nice. It's like good for a value. I sort of like we had the similar one. With Hunter, we, we add a random Hunter minion spell and secret to your hand. Uh, I'm not sure, is that still in our rotation? I think we could still play that card actually. It's not rotated out yet. Probably will be in the next expansion. I think it was a all doom card. All right. Uh, wow. Okay, Frosting Berserker, how do you get that to work? After you summon a minion, another minion, give it rush. So uh, probably the fifth or sixth version of this card. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It used to be give your minions charge, give them charge on one attack, give them one attack, give them charge but they can't attack face. So it basically means give them rush now. Okay. That's interesting. So it could be a, a lot of... Well, if you combine this with a new card, which... Whenever you play a rush minion, let's just find it for you here. Right, so after a friendly rush minion attack still two damage to the enemy hero, that's going to be a ridiculously strong with this card now. Because all you need is just lots of tokens and just attack, attack, attack. Um, where's the other card, the new one? Ah, it was probably, no, it's a standard card. It's a standard card, that's why. Um, there is a card which, whenever you play a rush minion, summon a one health copy. Right, I'm not sure where it is. Uh, here we obviously summon a rush minion, give it two attacks, another rush minion synergizing card. Um, where is that card? I'm pretty sure it's this expansion. Maybe I'm wrong. Alright, strange. Pretty sure it was this expansion. Okay, whatever. So, right, so let's finish this off now. Um, so warrior. Again, these are just like support cards really for whatever the archetype, the warrior archetype is going to be defined by what the current expansions are. I don't think you can base any archetypes on this. You've got, you've got a lot of support for rush there. Got another rush minion there. Yeah, okay. So, right, summing up, um, I think the best deck is going to be Paladin by far. It's going to be a pure Paladin, a pure silver hand based Paladin. Uh, might not have to be pure actually, it could just be silver hand Paladin, but I think that's the deck to go for. And uh, there could be. 
you could have a nice trink druid as well especially with the current cards like a uh, arbor up and things like that and it could be i'm yet to be convinced but an aggro priest or a tempo priest and weapon weapon um rogue uh, and definitely, well, this is a bit cheating because based on the new expansion which is coming out, definitely spell shaman. So like spell damage shaman, spell damage mage. They just burn you. And then you're going to have warlock, big demon warlock, I'm guessing. Right, okay. And yeah, nothing else sticks out too much. So those are the cards. Uh, thanks for watching. If you watched the whole video, I hope this was helpful. Um, there are going to be, hopefully I'll put chapters in so you can go straight to the bit which you're interested in. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching everyone. And thanks so much for the, the new subscribers. I've got a lot of new subscribers recently. We're almost up to 70 now, which is fantastic. Uh, and special thanks to Axel K for giving me tips on getting new subs and the nice new... Uh, uh what they called thumbnails yeah very nice right thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next video bye for now